There we are. Good afternoon. Although it's good morning to you, isn't it, Tony? It just says lunchtime, so we're good. Afternoon. Oh, yeah. It's 3.30 here. So <laughs> I'm starting in the middle like I tend to do. Um, I am Melissa McLeod here at the Wool and the Floss in Gross Point, Michigan, just outside of Detroit, and along with my Needlepoint bestie, Megan Holmes, at the Needlepoint Clubhouse in St. Louis, Missouri. We pull together every couple of weeks um, these uh, videos and now audio podcasts, the Pointing It Out podcast. We talk about all things Needlepoint and sometimes Needlepoint adjacent. Um, but today I am so excited because um, I am uh, here with me, Tony Carter, um, who is the one of the owners and operators of Threadworks, which is one of my very favorite threads that I honestly don't know enough about. So for those of you who are listening, you're probably really excited to learn more about it. And guess what? This is going to be super authentic because I know nothing really. I shouldn't say I know nothing. I know limited amounts about your threads and how they come to be. And I'm so excited to learn more. So thank you for joining me. Absolutely. Good, good, good. So let's start with just like before we get into the products, because that's that's the exciting part. But it's also exciting to know more about the person, of course, that we're talking to. So tell us a little bit about like your background, where you are, where you grew up, what your education is in, what other jobs you might have had before you became one of the owners and operators of Threadworks. OK, so we are currently located in Garden Grove, which is about 15 minutes from Disneyland, which is where everybody knows where that is. The West Coast, um, the West Coast Disney, the, the California yeah, Disney, right? Yes, OK, yes. Disneyland, not Disney World, but yes. And in this location, we have our production where we make the threads and also our fulfillment. So we send out all the threads to our customers from here. So can I ask a really uh, dumb question? No what such of, thing, but yes. One of well, because I'm a Michigan girl, I don't know, I don't really know my um, California geography. Although I did have yes. a son, I, I did have a son. I still have a son who did live <laughs> in San Diego, so I feel like I'm oh. getting a little bit better. But yes. um, one of the other large thread manufacturers is based in Burbank. So how far is Burbank from you? It's about forty five minutes. With or without traffic? Is that the right question well, for California? Yeah, that's a really good question. <laughs> At a little PS there, yes. In Southern California, that's without traffic. It could okay. be much longer with traffic, and that just is a roll of the dice. <laughs> so that's fascinating. So two of our major thread providers for this industry are located so close together. I love it. So yes, yes. Okay. So keep going. Sorry to interrupt. Okay. But I'll have those not, little not questions here and there. Absolutely. So I was a little bit about me. I was born in LA, which is about 45 minutes also from here. Um, but I was raised in Orange County. So I spent my entire life, I'm native Californian, Southern California, and all my jobs and businesses I've ever been involved in have been locally within 30 miles, let's say. Okay. Um, graduated from high school in Fountain Valley where I met my wife who I'm still married with 35 years. I love years. it. Congratulations. <laughs> that, that's Thank a big you. thing. I I am I am I 34 years I think and yeah with the oh. with the statistics with divorce oh, you know yeah. it's something we should both be proud of. Absolutely. So um I ended up going to Cal Poly Pomona University, graduated in business in 1990. Okay. A little while a little while ago. Um, and since then, I've been in all types of industries from healthcare, medical to import export. And I have a passion for small businesses. And so that's pretty much my background. So that passion for small business must have led you to Threadworks, right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, yes. So give me kind of the background of Threadworks? Like when did the okay. company start? How did it start? You're obviously not the original owner from what you have said. Nope. So yep. yeah. So Later. it started like, I want to say over 25 years ago by okay. a lady by the name of uh, Elaine. And it, the company was started as Needle Necessities. I and have some old needle necessities thread in my stash because I've been stitching since like the 70s. So, yeah. Oh, OK. OK. Yes, then. Yes. So I did actually know that they were related. I just forgotten that they were related. So. OK, so, well, for those of you like yourself who have some of the old threads, we have a conversion chart on our website that you can download uh -huh. and see which threads, because a lot of those carried over and are called something else now. 
So if a kit or something calls for specific thread works, you might have it in needle necessities. I love it. I love it. So that's on your main yeah. website, which I'm, yes. I will put in the show notes here, but it's perfect. Thread There's a tab for download. Yeah, we have a download uh, tab on our website and it, it says um, conversion chart and you can download that or view it online at any point. I love it. Okay, so yeah. Elaine had needle necessities. necessities. Yes, and Sandy, the one that I work with all the time, um, is our master dyer and she worked for Elaine for many, many, many years. And that's where she learned how to do over dyeing, which is our specialty. Yes. Um, yes. Unfortunately, Elaine passed away. And then at that point, over 15 years ago, Sandy and her son, Travis, a lot of people in the industry know both of them. They decided to open up Threadworks and keep the threads going. Um, so, and then, so, yes. so did what Sandy have, does that, that all still exist today? Or is that like a bigger conversation we should dive into in a second? Um, what, what do you mean? Say, say the question again. What are you asking? Well, so so when Sandy and Travis bought it, yes, yes, needle necessities had an over dyed six yes. ply cotton, I believe, because I think Correct. that's what I own. Absolutely. Um, so did she, and I, did she have a bunch of thread lines that now still exist, or did that that yeah. kind of some oh. came and some went? The the latter. So the okay. the certain ones came. We added another one, um, but there were some that were left behind. Okay, so we'll, we can talk yes. about what exists today and when and yes. it was original NN. If I don't know if you call yes. it that, but that's yes. what we're going to yes. call yes. it. Um, yes. Okay, so Sandy and Travis yes. bought, the, bought it from Elaine. And then and that was over 15 years ago. Okay. At, okay. Uh, roughly seven years ago, Travis became very busy with one of his other businesses. So they started looking for somebody to replace him. And that's when I met them. You, you were and the so, last one to say not it. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, what I, I say actually, sometimes about my job. <laughs> <laughs> Just the opposite. I was actually looking for a new challenge. I wanted something in this geographical area specifically. And um, uh, somebody put us in touch with each other and it immediately was a like perfect match. I so I, yeah, so I kind of took over uh, what Travis was doing, which was mostly marketing, operational uh, type stuff. And then eventually I got into the trade shows with Sandy. Uh, anybody that's new to Threadworks in the last six, just over six, seven years, they just, they know me and Sandy. Um, anybody prior to that remembers Travis and um, Sandy. Yeah. Yes. So that's a little bit of the history and how I got here. So that's exciting. So um, you have indicated you have a background in business. You have a background yes. in entrepreneurship, it sounds like. Um, Perfectly said, yes. Do you have any sort, like when you told your friends that you were buying into a thread company, were they like, <laughs> you're insane, like this makes no sense? Or were they like, oh yeah, because you've always been interested in art or something? Like, is there yes, a tie-in yes. for you? So that's a very good question. Uh, often I'm asked that. Um, mo most of my friends are actually since high school. And so they've seen me through my entire uh, professional life. And not one of them was surprised at all because that is kind of what I do. I retool myself. I get excited about small businesses. I get excited about learning about new stuff. So it, for them, no, not a surprise at all. Mm. Okay. But new people think, they, they will ask like, wait a minute, you, weren't you doing medical supplies before that? It's like, yeah, well, but that was, that was then. <laughs> medical supplies includes needles and thread too, right? You got it. Absolutely. <laughs> it's a bit of a stretch yes. and maybe that right, had a bigger right. downside when things went wrong yes. than this, but yeah, you know. Absolutely. <laughs> I tell everybody that it doesn't matter the industry you're in. Honestly, it has to do with um, people customer service, it has to do with quality of goods. Those things are the same in any business, whether it's a product-driven or service-driven business. So those things are the same, so. Well, and I will pipe in here right now as um, another small business owner who is very <laughs> reliant upon looking good based on the 
uh, products that my vendors supply to me. Um, and you and I talked about this briefly at um, the last market we were at when we were in, where were we? Frisco? Dallas. Yeah, Dallas. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Um, and I said, hands down, you all provide the fastest turnaround of any no. of our thread or embellishment manufacturers. And I know that can't be easy. So I know you've got <laughs> lots of people working really, really hard behind the scenes, yes. probably including yourself um, yes. to make that happen. So um, you've obviously learned that customer service lesson well that you were talking about and um, brought it into this business. And uh, like I said, we I really appreciate, appreciate that. It. We we do, we hear very well, good compliments at market. Um, it is something that we, is a high priority for us. It is something that most of our customers will point out compared to other suppliers um, that we do do a very good job. So it is, I, I appreciate the, the compliment. It, it is something that we focus on. Um, the other thing that is might be a little unique about our business, I don't think it's unique, but apparently it is, is that we are very team driven. So what I mean by that is if somebody, if, if the pulling or packing or it, it dying, whatever, uh, me or anybody, we're not too good to be doing any of the positions. We will jump in and help out whatever needs to be done so that we can keep it going. <laughs> and that is probably one of the reasons that I, um, I'm attracted to your business because mm -hmm. I actually had a customer call the other day and she said to me, I don't know if she listens to the podcast, but she said, well, why are you answering the phone? And I said, well, I hope you won't be offended by this, but I scrub the toilet too. Like I take out the trash. Like yes. I do, I'm like you, I do like if we're behind in shipping, I'll be sitting down at the shipping desk. Like yes. I do whatever needs to get done because you and I both are very customer service driven and want our customers yes. to have an excellent experience. And that Absolutely. sometimes means doing things that are a little bit more menial. And I don't mean that in a bad way, but no, absolutely know, not. I don't always have the pleasure of sitting down and talking big picture with one of my favorite vendors. I sometimes <laughs> have to actually roll up my sleeves and do some real work. So right. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. It's like the pandemic, I think proved to a lot of people like what small business owners will do yes. in a crisis, right? It For lasted sure. way longer than anybody knew. Uh, but those of us that have small businesses is like, we didn't know what the future was, but no. at, at this moment, we need to do what we have to do to service our customers because we don't know what the future is. So we, For we sure. did what others didn't do because that's what we do. <laughs> yeah. I, I think the pandemic kind of this, this might not be a politically correct statement anymore, <laughs> but the, it separated the men from the boys. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> So, I, I, I have to agree. There were just a lot of people that, you know, um, I would say rose to the occasion. For sure. And, and, and some that just said, you know, I don't think I want to try that much. It's like, right. okay, well, well, the fate of was, your business is in your hands. <laughs> and it was at an emotionally trying time. So I, you know, oh, part of absolutely. me respects that as well. You know, like, yes, it, it just, we all dealt with it differently. Um, yeah. My family might say I worked too much and that I oh, was a little did bit for sure. absentee. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to, you know, get a better work-life balance going now. So I hear you. I hear you. Yes. Um, so all this to say, um, have you ever needle pointed? It's a, it's a very common question. So the answer is kind of. So <laughs> I can't not do it. I, I don't have the time to do it as much as I want. But as we had talked, at maybe a market... Um, I am officially empty nester now, so I hope to spend more time doing it. But my only experience that I could honestly say that I've done in, to this date is that when we have new colors that we're trying out, I really want to see what it's going to look like. So I'll do a little patch, you know, a uh, uh, two by two square or something so I can get a better idea of what it's going to look like. Because there is a difference between seeing it on the wall or in a skein as on a canvas, right? And so, especially with your threads and the overdive yeah, process, it makes right. a big difference. So I love that. Right, right. Love right. That. So yeah, I hope to do more. Um, I would like to someday showcase at market some of my work. <laughs> but so far, it's just been mostly just so that I can see what it's going to look like so that we can make the decision. Are we going to move forward with right. that color? 
Yeah. Well, that that's a very that's a very fair response. I appreciate it. I would <laughs> say um, I'm in the good fortune of about six weeks ago, I had one mm -hmm. of my staff, one of my flossets go full okay. time. And oh. so, uh, I've been able to find more time to stitch. So when you are a small business nice. owner, sometimes it's hard to find those things. And yes, you know, I had projects I'd promised to people. And, um, so yeah, so have it, yeah. have, finding the time is not always easy. So, no, um, no. okay. So let's talk about, let's talk about the threads you carry. Okay. I, I have a number of them in my shop. Um, I have yes. a few that are, we carry the full lines. I have some that I don't have any, and I have others that I have a good portion of your thread line. Okay. Um, and I love them all. I really, really do. <laughs> um, and yeah, so maybe it makes sense. I don't know what order you were going to talk through these. I have actually your uh, over dyed. I don't know if you just call it your over dyed silk, but it's a uh, yes. soir. Oh yes, um, and we have, we have me. that. Okay, yes. So um, I tried to sit here so everyone could admire your beautiful colors. It's mixed, <laughs> it. it's mixed in with a little pepper pot and a little soy luster and some that's okay. Some, some swa that is not over dyed, the original yes, swa. Sure. Um, yeah, sure. And yeah, but I know. Let's if if you don't mind, let's talk about yeah. the threads that were first in the line to your knowledge that maybe came from needle necessities, which I think would yeah. be the six ply cotton floss. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So one of the things that a lot of people don't realize is that um, we over dye. And when I say over dye, by definition, it means we're dying on top of already dyed thread. Okay. So, so do you know the answer yes. to this question? Because these are terms that get thrown around a lot in needlepoint. And I think I, I gave you a heads up on this ahead of time, but a lot of times we'll hear the word variegated. We'll hear yes. the word over dyed and we'll hear the yes. word tonal. Yes. So do you, I mean, I, I have my gut instinct on what the difference of all those things is, but you sure. are a professional. So maybe you can <laughs> address that. Absolutely. So First off, I'll say that there are sometimes it's used incorrectly. So I often, if somebody asks me, I will ask them questions first before I respond. But in general, when they talk about over dye, they're talking about that you're taking a thread, a fiber of any kind, and you're dying on top of something that's already been dyed, and whether it's a blue or green or whatever. And majority of our threads, like the floss, come like like this these are these are some dmc cones that we have of the six ply cotton floss that normally exactly. is sold in little tiny skeins yes, for like yes. 89 cents or something like that you got it so what we do is we dye on top of that and so that's that's where the term over dyed comes okay, okay? so the majority sense. of our threads are over dyed we do have some that start off for example, um, the silks you had mentioned. We have the Verisois. Um, I didn't bring a sample. I don't have a sample of that, but here is vineyard silk. Okay. And a Verisois just comes in natural. And so we dye from just the natural, which is like an off-white cream color. The vineyard we get in, this one is uh, white. And they come in these little, well, not little, but big hanks. The hanks we get yeah. white and natural. And then we dye the colors on that. Um, here's a sample of DMC, our pearl, pearls. They come in thousand gram, um, huge cones. Wow. So I'm going to um, just jump in here for a second. Sure. And I keep forgetting this because we are now on audio podcasts. So Tony yes. is very graciously showing oh, sorry. us. sorry. No, I forget too. <laughs> uh, this is this is new territory. So my mistake. He's showing us his base products, which most of your threads are anywhere from five to 20 yards come on a finished thread yes. work skein. Yes. Correct. But where they're starting out with are these giant either cones or giant yes. uh, hanks, excuse me, a hank yes. is usually like 600 yards, or yes. you were saying 100 grams, which it, it yes. all varies. I used to be a knitting it shop does. owner, so this all makes a lot of sense to me. But for some of our listeners, um, many times larger amounts of fibers are sold by weight rather yes. than by yardage. So, um, but in this case, it's, it's huge amounts that are coming to you in either base colors, whether the base yes. colors are 
red, blue, purple, whatever, Correct. or whether they are white or off white. So anyway, Correct. sorry about that. Right. I, I keep That's forgetting okay. That's the okay. audio I, version. I, I, so I didn't realize that. So, okay. So, so back to the original question. So, so over dyed is, as I said, is we're dying on top of existing thread that's already been dyed another color. Okay. Then the next thing was, I think you said var variegated. Correct. So variegated is the, by definition means a variety of colors. Now it could be that on one thread, it has yellow, pink, blue, all on one thread, completely different colors, or it could be uh, pink, a little darker pink, then a red, and then a darker red. So both are considered variegated. Now, some people, they want to distinguish the difference and they'll say tone on tone or tonal. When they say that, it is specifically, it's the same color, but different shades of that color. Okay. Is that so, so, so some the question? Of, so, some of, so some of your line is some, all of your line is some of the, those combinations of things. So Correct. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's that's it. <laughs> Absolutely correct statement. We usually say variegated because that encompasses both multicolor and tone on tone colors. Okay. But if somebody asks specifically for tone on tone or tonal, then I know they just want all subtle shades maybe of the same color. Right. And and yes. to, back to the original original question, the over dyed would be yes. the one that is not vineyard silk because you said vineyard, you you dye on top of kind of a, a base neutral, if that's a fair yes, term. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that would technically probably be considered variegated or tonal, but not over dyed. You're right. Absolutely. Those <laughs> this would be is the, really uh, all superfluous information, but um I almost was good a, at I was almost a linguistics major in college. And then I oh. figured out I'd never make any money with being a linguistics major. <laughs> and I really right. wanted to support yes. myself, but I'm still fascinated yes. by language. So um, okay. sorry for the deep dive. Thank you for, no. thank you for I, pacifying me on that it, one. <laughs> no, I, I, you'd be surprised how many people don't understand that. And the majority of the people that I meet at market that are new, they think that all of our colors start off was white. So it's, right. it's, 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 it's not a, it's not an, uh, uh, it's a good question to ask. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. So yes. your, um, so back to one of your first threads, which was the six ply cotton. Yes. From needle necessities. And that's correct. dyed on that's over dyed. Correct. 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 Colors. You and got that it. still exists in your line. And yes. I believe that I'm right. When I say you have five yard skeins and you have yes. 20 yard skeins. Right. That is absolutely correct. The, the 20 yard skeins have always been our super seller uh, across more than any other line. Um, probably more recently, I would say in the last year or two, the five yard skeins started becoming more popular. And I th and what I realized is um, a lot of our existing co customers did not know that we even had five yards as an offer. And you and I talked about that at market because we've had yeah. the 20 yard skeins. I was like, huh, well, maybe we should have started with a five yard. But to <laughs> me, like, and, and maybe I'm wrong about this, the five yard skein maybe speaks more to the cross stitchers, which I'm guessing you have a yeah. number of cross stitch stores that you work Correct. with as well. Um, yes. Because in cross stitch, you would use only one or two strands for the most part, I think. Yes. I, I'm not a cross stitch I, no, that's expert. A, that's so. That's that's accurate. Um, the majority of our five yard per customers are cross stitch. They, they, it's this a store that has sells to cross stitch, or it sells to both. And we do have right. customers that carry both the five and the twenty. The twenty is by far the value. So even if you only need two ten yards, you're better off getting the twenty yards. You know, right, skeins. Right. Yeah, and I think that most of the time. Uh, uh, needle pointers will the only time they'll be buying the fives is if they're kidding in some of the kits they want to be more precise as to what they get and and not extra right right yeah because yeah. on a needle point for those that have not used the six ply floss it would be the same as using an anchor floss or a dmc floss in terms of yes. your usage um Correct. you're probably using at least three ply I can't there there would be very I guess occasionally you'd use two ply but if you're stitching for the most part you're going to use three four 
apply on 18 and you're going to use maybe even five, possibly even six on 13 mesh canvas. So, um, yeah, so you can go through that 20 yards pretty fast. Yes, so, absolutely. Okay. So we have covered, I think the thread works <laughs> cotton floss. Um, yes. what do you think came next? Um, I know in the early, early days, um, the silks, and the metallics came very quickly afterwards. So and, um, what would you like to know about those? <laughs> well, I have to say um, in our shop, probably every shop girl would say our, one of our favorite metallics is your Threadworks metallics. So, but either one's <laughs> fine because we'll get there either way. So, right, yeah. right. So the metallics, um, I think you had asked, and I get often uh, people make comments about why ours is softer then yes. um, are easier to work with than when they buy directly from Krynik. And I, I, there is not a, um, we don't do something to it intentionally to make that, but I think right. the process right. of us are dying where we're soaking, we're um, handling the thread a lot. I think it just loosens it up so that the end product is that it is softer. And that, that was my gut instinct is it was probably an innate part of the dying process. Um, right. Because I think, right. you know, you probably have to beat it up a little bit to, <laughs> to get it to be the color too. you want. So we actually and I, do beat it up quite a bit. And I love Krynik. Occasionally I will have a customer who will say, I don't like to work with Krynik. It's too hard to work with, which honestly I, I don't agree with, but I always... I respect people who have stitched with somebody before and they say it's not their favorite and i will sure. say, try this because it tends to be a little bit more malleable and kind of behaves a little bit nicer in some ways because it's just softer and i don't know it just is really really nice to work with so and yeah. usually they come back and they say you were right so that's yes good. yes we um, like that yeah i think so, also it's they, it gets softer the 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 depending on the braid like the 12 braid is definitely thicker and stiffer versus the eight braid. The four is just as soft as can be. So <laughs> nice. And oh, yeah, sorry. So, ahead. so does, so is Krynik technically over dyed? What do you start? What's your base product yes. for the, the Krynik? Yes, so it is over dyed. We do buy white from them, but very rarely do we use white. I have Oh gosh, I don't want to say hundreds, but dozens of colors that we buy from um, Krynik. So it is definitely an over dyed. So they're coming to you presumably on those giant spools. I'm guessing. Yes, the, because the, the because of the just the way it is, they come in like this, not as big as the floss. It's uh, mainly because of the cost of it, to be honest with you. So right, right. <laughs> they they don't come in as jumbo, but they are a thousand meters each okay. one. There we go. So yeah. I, I do some quick uh, change over to yard <laughs> to yards, but I can't. So you guys can yes. do that at home for your own entertainment. <laughs> so, um, yes, awesome. Yes, yes. So and you have. I believed you have all of your colors available on all three base sizes, number four, number eight, number 12. So good question. We, our goal is always to have one of every uh, braid. Unfortunately, there are a couple that we don't have the four braid and that's because Krynik doesn't offer in the four braid. So gotcha. we, obviously we can, there's nothing we can do about that, but the, that's only a few um, in the whole collection. Um, we, and then when we add in a new color, our first question is, do you have it in all braids? <laughs> so, because right. that's, that is our, our preference. Gotcha. And I should yeah. have asked this earlier and you don't have to give me an exact number, but approximately how many different colors do you have in the cotton floss? Oh, in the cotton floss, we almost have 300 colors. Wow. So <laughs> I say, I say I have about a third of your line or excuse okay. me, two thirds of your line. And I lie because I probably have 60 colors over there. And I thought that was about a third, but no, not so much. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I am, um, I'm surprised how much, um, how many requests we get to expand on uh, colors that we seem to have a ton of, let's say blues, reds greens uh people can't get enough of those uh, they're always asking for more 
Um, I've tried a couple of times to discontinue a couple of colors that didn't seem that popular. And I got a lot of heat for that. <laughs> Yes. uh, you should never discontinue, discontinue any colors, but you can always Correct. add. And we, yeah, so it's a, um, so that's the reason why the collection continues to grow. It's just, um, it's had to, I, I would say it's probably tripled since, um, back in needle necessities probably. I bet, I bet. And then Yeah. how many colors Yeah. of the uh chronic do you have? The overdyed Uh, chronic? Krynik, it's over a hundred, I think 115 Okay. colors in that one. Yeah. God, I would love to have them all too. Unfortunately, I have a tiny little shop. And so we, I don't know if you remember, this was probably the first time that you and I interacted and it was, I think right before COVID. And, Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, I asked if I could buy a color ring and you're like, mm, we don't do that. But, uh, At that point in time, you were very gracious and let me have a, a color, one of everything on loan. And I quickly, Okay, okay. quickly worked through it because um, unlike the overdyed wool that we'll get to and the overdyed uh, swa, where I said at market, let's just take them all. Um, that, that was more doable because you didn't have, you know, 300. As many. I, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Those are smaller collections. We have it's very common for um store owners because I understand it's 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 uh retail space. And it's capital outlay. So a lot of stores will ask me for, they'll just tell me I can carry a hundred and they'll ask for the most popular hundred Yes. and I'll run a report for them. And usually what I'll tell them is I'm going to run a report for the top 150 because what you're going to find is in the top hundred are a ton of greens, reds, and blues. And you don't want your whole wall just to be all, you know, so I'll, I'll give you like a list of 150 and then you can pick from there. you know, to get a good uh, variety. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So then we've alluded to the vineyard silk, which is Yes. technically either tonal or variegated and not over dyed because it starts out on a white or a natural base. Correct. Um, and how many colors of that do you have? Uh, the vineyard and the Verisois, we do um, exactly the same. So when we come out with a color, it comes out in both So both of them are about 90, just over 90 colors, and they are the same colors. So similar to the metallics, every braid is the same color. Vineyards and Averisois, they have the same colors for um, each line. So for those that have not used, I think, I think most of our listeners have used vineyard silk. That's a pretty, very common thread. A very Yes. far is also very common, but it is a seven ply strandable silk, I believe is correct. Hopefully Yes. I've got that number seven, right? Um, Uh, uh, about the Verisois, yes, seven. yes. Yes. And so, um, Some people that have stitched for a while will say, I'm not going to strand. It's too hard. It, and I'm just going to do a little public service announcement. It's not hard. You just have to get over being scared of it. It is a little bit more labor intensive. So if you're someone who's trying to get through something quickly, um, laying your strands and making them look beautiful is a little bit more work. Um, so I can understand why you'd have the same colorways in both lines because you have kind of the the cut and go thread and then you have the string Yes. of thread that creates a little bit more work. So. Yes, yes. The Verisois, I would say, uh, has become more popular um, recently. And I think just like maybe for you guys, because you did you carry both or just the Verisois? I, Do you have the we Vineyard? just brought in the Verisois. We do not have any of your um, vineyard silk, but Vineyards. you know, <laughs> you know, I'm already thinking, oh, 90, I could probably fit that. <laughs> <laughs> so the Verisol has been getting more popular because like you said, this is for the person who wants the easy, the vineyard is twisted. So it is what it is. The Verisol seems to be uh, getting more popularity because, because it's stranded, you can pull one piece off, you can do two pieces, three pieces. It has a lot more options. So that that's the main, main, main difference between the two. Gotcha. Good, good, good. Okay. So we've covered cotton, we've covered silk, we've covered metallics. We have not talked about your overdyed wool. Okay, so the wool, our Bella Lusa line looks, it comes like this. And for those audio listeners, it's a small, very soft hank. 
And this Hank comes in 350 that, yards. I was just going to say, I think that's 350 yards. So this is not supposed to be about Bella Luso, but I'm going to throw this out there because a lot of people no. aren't aware of that. Bella Luso is a fabulous thread line, which um, is distributed by the, the place down the street from Tony we were talking about you earlier. You got it. Um, yes. And it is a fabulous, very um, soft wool thread, a little bit thinner, um, for the most part on an 18 mesh, you will pull two strands of it. Typically it comes in a 45 yard skein. Um, but if you're working in a large space, your local needlepoint shop can order a full hank for you, which I think like we retail it for $16 or $18. Like it's very reasonable for that amount of yardage. So I will mm -hmm. occasionally order hanks of the Bella Luso. When I'm ordering it, it's because someone's doing a large background. You're getting Hanks of Bella Luso because you're going to over dye it, correct? You got it. So we do. We over dye on Bella Luso. We have we get it in different all different colors, and then um, and dye on top of it. We have a variety of. I think that one we have about just over eighty colors options, and they are all over dyed. Um, and I don't think we have any multicolor if we do it's only a few most of them are tone on tone okay and yes. i have to say i started down the path with the belluso because every shop owner i know said well i don't carry a lot of the over dyed belluso but i can't keep that santa's beard in stock which is <laughs> yeah. white with a little bit of gray so yes. i walked into your market <laughs> booth intending on bringing home like two or three colors of overdyed Bell Luso. And then somehow we ended up with all 80. So um, yeah, so they are fabulous. So if a shop owners are listening and you um, just want a smattering, um, there's a lot of really good uh, whites with a little bit of gray. I shouldn't say a lot. There's two two of them, I think. Does that sound mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So they- Santa's they beard, make... yeah. And it's really funny. My, my partner in crime here, Megan, um, she always knows your- color names like she'll talk about bradley oh. bradley balloons Bradley's, and i'm like yes and i call it the confetti thread which is totally melissa mcleod's made up term um and that's one of my favorite overdyed uh or yeah it is overdyed um yes. your thread works um uh, metallics uh but your colors your threads all have color names and color numbers and i tend to know Correct. the numbers and not the names and she knows the names and not the numbers so yes around we go Right we go. Yeah, that that Bradley balloons um, has always been at one of the top three floss colors. Um, but there were some patterns that were done, and then over the pandemic, people just it went went viral, and now it's like by leaps and bounds the most popular. And we also all offer that same color in metallics. Okay, and I don't have that in front of me, but um, I'm going to try to describe it. It is an overdyed thread and it will have pink, purple, yellow, green, blue, and maybe two or three inches or so of each yes. color. And I, I don't think it's a standard repeat, is it? It is a standard repeat. It is. Okay. It and is. it may even have more colors than that. Oh, look at Colleen is my thread guru around here and she's uh, she listening to me. And so here we go. So look at how beautiful that is. So where we recommend this quite a bit. Oh, that's is, the pearl, uh, Bradley Blues and Pearl. Um, this is actually the overdyed. This is uh, 71154. This is the metallic. Oh, you not, do have it. Okay, I can see now. Yes. Yeah, it may a, not look sparkly on screen. We have it in pearl as well, but you're right. That's the metallic one. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. So um, whenever we have something that has like a lot of different spots of little bits of color, like... Um, where a lot of people would do beading. I'm like, you could do yeah. French knots with this and it'll oh, look the same and be not yes. quite so much work. I, I like to say yes. I'm a bit of a lazy stitcher, meaning if <laughs> I can get the look without all the hard work, I'll always go yes. with the easier option. So anyways, Absolutely. this indeed would be Bradley's balloons, which um, I think I've described pretty well for the audio listeners, but um, yes. showed and showing it there. So anything else we need to know about the wool? No, I don't think so. Okay. And we just um, inadvertently or maybe intentionally on your part brought up the fact that you have pearl cotton. In. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Is yes. that over dyed or is that? 
There it is over dyed. It's <laughs> it is over dyed, and um, it's a pretty large connector. It's not as big as floss, but they are related. Um, and when I mean related, I mean that any color that we offer in pearl is offered in floss. Okay. But not vice versa. And, right. and the reason, unfortunately, is DMC does not offer all the base colors we need to produce all the colors that we have in floss. Got it. So, uh, yeah, so um, all the colors are, like I said, we offer them in um, floss, um, but not vice versa. So... And maybe this goes back to my comment about Megan, how Megan knows the names and I yes. tend to know more the numbers. So yes. if we're looking to, let's say we want Bradley Bradley's balloons yes. across yes. Yes. as many product lines as you have, are the yes. numbers related? Like yes. I know that the thread works, this is 71154. And I can tell you right now without going to my wall that this is the eight, number eight, Krynik. If I yes. wanted this in number 12, it's going to be called 91154. So is there, is there a correlation in the other thread lines? If yes. people are trying to match up? Yes. So if you wanted that color in floss, um, it is 1154. If you wanted it in into 20 yard, if I wanted it in a five yard, it'd be 01154. Okay. If you wanted it in pearl, we happen to have that in all pearl uh, three, five, and eight. And all you would do is add the three. So in the pearl three, it would be three, one, one, five, four. And okay. five, five, one, one, five, four. And eight, eight, one, one, five, four. So is that magic puzzle solution posted on your website anywhere? Uh, you can go on our website and we have a 2023 product list. And it shows all the product names and numbers. And so, so it'll you can become flip. a parent. Yes. yes okay. Exactly. That's good to know. Yes. Cause when we're yeah. um, putting together, uh, pulling together threads for a stitch guide, let's say in, yes. in the shop yes. and someone, it might call for using three strands of something that we don't have that, yes. that color, then we could order that or we could also say if you happen to have the number yeah. uh eight there we go i had to get my yes, number yes. right the number eight <laughs> pearl cotton it should yes. work about the same depending on how the thread's being used so that right. that's really interesting to me um it's a it's a problem solving uh ability having that information so i love that yes ab that. absolutely Okay, so we talked about the the pearl cotton which is in three different sizes you said three Five, five and, and eight. eight. So yes. for for people who do don't use pearl cotton a lot, um, it happened to be back in the eighties. One of the only two threads that people really really stitched yeah. with. They stitched with pattern iron wool, and we stitched with pearl cotton. So three is more is a heavier, uh, yeah, thicker. thicker thread that you would use mainly on thirteen mesh. Some people even feel like it's a little thick for 13 mesh. And so they might use number five on either 13 or 18. And then if you like a lighter look or you're using a thread in a way that you want it to appear lighter, the number eight is even skinnier. So, I I just, and yes. I don't know, I should know this. This is where I admit like all the things I don't know quite a bit. Um, <laughs> I finally, it took me years to understand that there's a question built into this, but it took me years <laughs> to understand the Krynik number four, number eight, and oh, number yes. 12, and why they were called what they were called. Because there's little individual pieces of thread that are braided together. So yes. the four braid is half as small as the eight braid because the it has four threads and then it has eight threads that are braided together. Yes. And then the yes. 12 is three times as big as the four braid or one and a half times as big as the eight braid. So Correct. Maybe I'll, people aren't into numbers the way I am, but that all works for me. <laughs> but what I've never understood is why Pearl 3, 5, and 8 are called Pearl 3, 5, and 8. Do you have any? That's a good question. You know what? I've never, uh, I never. Okay. I've never asked or that question, but it is a good question. I just took it for face value. <laughs> well, that's okay. For years, I didn't question why Craddock was, you know, had the different label. So, and it was just. Yeah. 
once I understood that now, I, now I completely understand how it interrelates. So I was just wondering if maybe you knew yeah. that, but you weren't no, required to know that Tony, neither yeah, one of us. I knew that about, I knew that about the chronic uh, braids and, and how they're made, but I didn't know, I don't know that about the pearls. It's I'm going to guess that one of our watchers is going to know that and they'll comment on the YouTube there video, you whatever, and answer that question for us. So we like Excellent. that. Okay. Absolutely. So what threads <laughs> haven't we covered? Uh, we have some, I don't have any samples here, but um, our specialty threads, which is the legacy. And that is, you know, it's uh, most of the, our customers is called the hairy um, thread because it's got, look, looks kind of like a boa, a woman's boa, you know, with a little fiber sticking out of it. And it's polyester um, right? Yes, it is. So it would it be is. somewhat similar for those that are familiar with the rainbow gallery threads. It would be be very similar, oh. I think, to Arctic Rays. Does that sound yes, right? Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. Same but thing. then, of course, Ophrodite. But it's not, I don't think right. it's the Arctic Rays product. But it's more like that than something like Fuzzy Stuff, which has shorter, right. more thread-like threads, or um, Silk Eyelash from Trinway, which unfortunately is no longer available, which is a 100% silk thread. So it's yes. a polyester base, right? Yes, it's. I, I think uh, that it's... It's, it is a polyester. They call it a polyamide. Okay. But it's polyester. <laughs> we have that in 50 colors and they come in 10 yard skeins and people like to couch that on certain things to give it some depth. Maybe the mane on a horse or, you know, something like that. A little uh, fancy hat that has little fuzzies on it. Um, but that one it is similar to another one that you had mentioned uh, we carry the uh, Chronic Chanel, which is the shorter yes. um, uh, type fuzzy kind of stuff. And we carry that as well. That's okay. probably, that is that is our newest line, which has oh. only been, and I want to say it was just before the pandemic we started carrying that. So about four and, and, years ago. And how many colors do you have in the Chenille? 28 colors. Okay, interesting. That's also an over -dyed. I knew that okay. was going to be a question. <laughs> I've gotten <laughs> predictable. Over <laughs> it's over dyed. It, 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 we do not have any multicolor in that line. It is all tone on tone. And is it um, the, I think I have this right. Hold on. Isn't there a micro ice chenille? Isn't there a shorter that's it, longer? That's it. That's okay. no, uh, it is micro, uh, chronic calls it micro chenille and we just called it ice Chanel, but it is that okay. that is the okay. same one. Yes. Got it. Okay. That is that is a fun thread. I've just used it recently on um not yours because I don't think I knew that you guys did that. <laughs> so I guess we know what's happening next to my uh thread world. Um <laughs> I just used go. it for icicles on a oh, government house. So, perfect. Yes. And I was able to, for the most part, I agree with you that couching is the way to go. I was yeah. able to, um, on 13 mesh, kind of enlarge my holes and stitch with it. But I'll be honest, like, it's not designed for that. So yes. as you stitch yes. with it, the yes. the little hairy things will start to fall off if yes, you're using exactly. it in ways it wasn't designed for. But I've had people ask me at the at market, you know, can I stitch with it? I go, well... I'll just say this: People have done it before, yes. um, but and long but it, that, stitches, that, and, and but it's not intended to. And you yeah. might get some little pieces popping off, but it can be done. Uh, we just say it's used for couching, and then there's nobody that says that. I no thought you said it could. <laughs> nobody's mad at me. Yes. Yeah. So Don't I, that. <laughs> I used a larger needle and enlarged the holes that I was coming going through, through and yeah. then um, used it just in longer stitches. And I okay. also still used it in a very short, like I probably used a Section. 12 inch strand Okay, because the more you dragged it through those holes, the, the naked or it got. So <laughs> yeah. um, you yeah, end up so, with just string. <laughs> yeah. And which, which wasn't the look you were going for. Okay. No. So legacy and, and his legacy, legacy is different from Chenille, correct? The legacy is the longer, the longer yes. strands in, and thinner, chenille's thinner, a little more. Yes, longer strands and each of the strands is thinner. It's it's more hairy like than um I don't know what you call the um other one, which is a little shorter. It's more like tinsel. So, 
I would say. So one, one's hairy and one's fuzzy. Yeah, that's that. that <laughs> for lack know. of technical term, absolutely would be described that way. I am yeah. very good at com- making up words. So we're going to go with that. Okay. <laughs> so any other thread lines we've left out? No, I think we've covered uh, wool, specialty, uh, pearl, metallic, and floss. I love it. Yeah, I think that I think we got it all. <laughs> so you have a lot on your plate. So let's what well, we didn't talk about, we alluded to at the beginning. How many employees do you have? Like how many people work for Threadworks? Good question. So everything that we do, this is another thing that um, a lot of our customers don't know. Everything is by hand. We don't machine do anything. So we have five employees that work here in the offices, but then we have five independent contractors. They're the ones who actually do the scanning and packaging of the stuff. And they're able to do that at their house. So they love to do that instead of clocking in and out. (laughs) Right, right. Work from home is the the new thing for sure. It is, Um, it is. Not all that new, but we've all as business owners figured out ways that we can have some people doing that because that's what the world needs. A little flexibility, I think. Absolutely, absolutely. So you have- Like we talked about earlier, life work balance, right? (laughs) Yes, yes. So um, your your dyeing happens on site, but your skating happens remotely. Correct. Okay. So, wow. So you have a really big operation that's run by really very few people relatively seemingly. Yes. It's, it's, it's a, um, our warehouse and production area is maximized in space. I mean, we don't have any inch not being used. We have literally hundreds of bins for each of the colors that we have. We have a full bin full of that product. Um, And then we have an area that is just our inventory of our floss cones. What that's the other thing that, you know, during just when the pandemic started, and then once we started getting back together, there was a big issue with a lot of people in supplies. So the number one question people would ask me is, how is your inventory? Because I'm having problems getting product from some of my suppliers. I said, we've never had a problem. But what we did was once that became an issue, we almost doubled our inventory. So for as an example, floss, we used to have about 2,500 of those large cones. We have now between four and five, no, 2,500. Yeah, now we have between four and 5,000 cones at any given time. Yeah, Um, so our inventory is massive. Um, and that goes, that, that's just our floss, um, all the other products. We also have a very large inventory. What I didn't want to happen is for somebody to want to carry our products and then have problems getting our products. So, um, that's just one of the things that we wanted to make sure we were, um, servicing our customers as best way possible. I love it. Well, you, like I said, I mentioned that earlier, you have done a a fantastic job of that. Thank Um, you. Okay. I think we kind of covered a lot yeah. about <laughs> what, like we didn't necessarily go in order because I tend to not do that. Um, That's okay. Do you have anything coming up the pike that you're op- open to talking about? Like new colors, <laughs> new product lines, anything um, exciting? I would just say that um, nothing new per se. We, we have signed in in the last year, a lot of new designers, not to... Um, and so I'm excited and I hope our customers are excited, but in the next 2024, I think there's going to be a lot of new designs that are coming out with our threads. So look out for those. Good, good. Well, I will tell you as someone who I do, um, you know, I, I, I'm not sure how this happens, but I, for instance, ditched this peppermint house canvas last month and somehow we sold like okay. six, 60 of them right away. And I, wow. I mean, it was a great design. I wrote a stitch guide, but I am very intentional at this point about choosing threads that are very readily available when I yes. expect to sell yes. lot. I will say in this particular canvas, I, I wasn't as thoughtful because I didn't 
I thought I'd sell like five. So <laughs> I, um, I try now when I'm writing stitch guides to use threads that are readily available. So that means that yes. I'm using a lot of Threadworks metallics over some of the other Excellent. choices and things like that. So, Excellent. Um, yeah. So anything else we haven't covered that you want to mm, share? We, we are always looking for more designers and our current designers to expand their their collection of Threadworks. Um, but no, I think we did a good job covering okay. all our bases. <laughs> well, I hope there's some shop owners um, out there listening to us that might consider adding your lines. Um, I think you will not be sorry. Uh, <laughs> if I had endless wall space, I would have I would have everything that I don't have. Um, <laughs> but unfortunately, you know, we're we're limited by by space. Um, so I, I try to make some good decisions. So I appreciate yeah. this, but I feel like this has been absolutely fascinating. Um, I've learned a ton. So good. I hope, good. Um, and I can't thank you enough for spending time with me. It was um, fun. Good, good. Uh, well, for anyone who's listening to us for the first time, whether they're on an audio podcast or this video podcast, um, please hit subscribe. That helps other stitchers and designers and shop owners find us. Um, and we hope that we're providing good information for all, all of those people out there. So if you hit that subscribe button, they'll be able to find us sooner. So thanks again for your time, Tony. I really appreciate it. No problem. Enjoyed it. Thank you. Thanks. See you soon. Okay. Bye.